Need some fast, cheap, reliable muck coins? Go to MMOXP.com and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. Welcome back, YouTubers and Madden fans. This is Mad Money Shot. This is never another Madden cheese, as always. Got another Madden 21 ratings video for you. This is probably going to be the last one. As all the ratings were released by now, uh, there's no more premiere videos. So I just wanted to go over all the player ratings in depth and tell you which ones I think were probably the worst ratings by EA. Uh, and I'm going to start off with the quarterback spot. And I'm going to start off with what I think is probably the biggest issue out of all the ratings, and that's EA's very own cover athlete, Lamar Jackson. This just goes to show how EA they can't get anything right as Lamar Jackson who won MVP of the league last year and really took the league by storm ended up with a 94 overall rating uh, which is just one point higher than Drew Brees and one point lower than Rob Gronkowski who came out of retirement now how does a player that wins MVP of the league is so hard to stop that he gets a cover spot on your own game and you only give him a 94. At the end of the day, that doesn't really matter though. His speed rating is going to be a 96, so he'll be just as broken as you want him to be when you're playing with him online. There are a lot of quarterbacks after that that I could take issue with. Deshaun Watson's rating being too low, Carson Wentz's rating being too low, but I think the one that stands out the most to me is Cam Newton, who comes in at 78 overall compared to essentially Baker Mayfield, who also has a 78 overall. Those the only two quarterbacks that have a 78 overall. Cam Newton is a former NFL MVP. He's had some injury issues, but I don't think necessarily that that is, is I mean, that probably took away from his abilities last year. I don't think a healthy Cam Newton is as low as a 78 overall. The guy's still a, 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 an explosive player that can do things with his legs. I think he's definitely better than that. He should probably be in the mid-80 range. Uh, 78 overall is a little bit disrespectful. Next up, the running back spot. Here's another name that really took the lead by storm last year and makes me wonder if EA even watches football. Derrick Henry coming in at number two amongst the running backs. Definitely not a horrible spot to be. But at a 93 overall rating, I mean, the way that he dominated the NFL last year as far as, especially when it came to the playoffs. I mean, he was doing everything from, from running over stacked boxes, uh, winning games where there was barely a pass thrown, to throwing passing touchdowns himself en route to winning uh, two playoff games and going straight to the AFC Championship game before they couldn't pull it off against the Chiefs. Uh, but ultimately, Derrick Henry, if you want to make this game just like real-life football, Derrick Henry should be as overpowered in the game as he is in real life. And I don't think a 93 overall rating is doing that justice. Now, I think that you can make the case for a lot of the other running backs to be rated a little bit higher. But to me, Saquon Barkley is probably, he's in the running for the best running back in the league, in my opinion. I think he's hes an amazing player. He plays in a, a little bit of a bad situation. Not a great offensive line. Not a great offense. Not great coaching. Not a well-run organization. He still puts up great stats. So, to me, I would have Saquon Barkley somewhere in the top three in my own personal personal opinion and on this he's rated as the sixth highest rated running back at a 91 overall another running back that i think should be rated higher is leonard fournette first round pick he's pretty much been the uh the jags offense especially last year same scenario as uh as saquon barkley where he really just didn't have anything around him i know he had a down season in 2018 but last year he bounced back in a big way 1,100 yards, not to mention he also caught a lot of balls. 76 catches from a guy who isn't really thought of as a receiving back. I mean, like I said, he was really, he was a big part of that offense, and I think he deserves a little bit more than what he got as far as a Madden rating. As far as receivers go, I was pretty cool with receivers. I really didn't have too many issues with too many receivers' rankings. Uh, so we're skipping over that and going straight to the tight ends. Now, this is one where I mentioned earlier that Rob Gronkowski is one of the most ridiculous ratings in the game this year. 95 overall for a guy that came off of a bad season uh, the last time he played. He was retired last year. So he went from, you know, being pretty much washed to the point where he had to retire to coming out of retirement and being a 95 overall. Definitely don't get that, uh, especially since, I mean, it's pretty obvious. The top three tight ends typically go George Kittle, Travis Kelsey, and Zach Ertz. Uh, Zach Ertz is well below where he should be at a 90 overall, five points lower than Rob Gronkowski, and I don't know what they're really basing that off of. So that's definitely one of my bigger issues of all the ratings uh, is definitely Rob Gronkowski's rating being way too high. So next up, we're looking at the front seven. That's defensive linemen and linebackers. Uh, TJ Watt, I want 
one over. I don't. I don't think that you know he's a ninety eight overall. I don't think he's that's pure reputation at this point. A lot of these guys are getting by on pure reputation. Von Miller is a guy who I thought um, deserved a ninety seven rating, but he that he has. But I think that I could agree. I, I had a lot of people tell me that Von Miller is probably a, a reputation uh, rating at this point too. So I don't really have an issue with either one of them. They're both ninety seven and ninety eight overall. That seems a little bit generous at this point in their careers, uh, even though they're still great players. They're just not doing it at the level that they were a couple years ago. Uh, and you know, I, I think that both of them should probably be rated a little bit lower. Uh, so people that I think that are rated too low is J.J. Watt's brother for one, T.J. Watt. First team all pro last year. He's got 27 plus sacks in the last two seasons. I think TJ Watt is a guy that should be a little bit higher than the 86 overall rating that they gave him. I think at this point, I mean, he's got to be cracking a 90. And I mean, he's he's also led the league in forced fumbles last year, which is obviously huge. He's a playmaker. He should be. He was on one of the best defenses in the league. He should stand out better than that. So to me, he's definitely one of the top guys on my target list that I say should definitely be a lot higher. But the one that I think is really getting overlooked and is one of the first names that I looked for when I saw the top 10 list released, and that's uh, Shaquille Barrett. Shaquille Barrett almost had 20 sacks last year. I mean, he was also one of the league leaders as fumble and fumble. One of the best as far as forced fumbles as well uh the guy was an absolute playmaker and i don't see how he could get overlooked as poorly as he has like i said i know he only had one year he didn't even play that much he was on the same team as von miller and uh some of the great you know bradley chubb some of the great outside linebackers in denver so he never really got his fair share but the second he got his chance and his opportunities in tampa bay he exploded onto the scene and he definitely deserves way higher than 85 i mean if he i would say if anything because I know consistency season season comes into play. Give him like an 89 or something. He should be like right below the top 10 because I mean he's just he's just lost in, in, in the names right now, I mean, he's behind Justin Houston, who still had a really good season last year, who's also an 85, uh, but he's also 85 years old. There's no way that Justin Houston at this point in his career is as good a player as Shaquille Barrett is. And then last but not least, we got the secondary. This is something that, you know, I don't really have a huge problem with the, uh, the names that were released in the top 10s when they came out. There were a few guys that were pretty sorely missing. I would say one of the biggest names that I couldn't believe wasn't on either of the top 10 lists uh, was Minka Fitzpatrick. I mean, the impact that he had when he came over from uh, Miami to the Steelers last year was amazing. I mean, they were everybody was laughing when they traded their first-round pick, including myself, was laughing that the Steelers traded their first-round pick to get Minka Fitzpatrick, considering that their quarterback was out for the year and it was probably going to be their season. And then Minka Fitzpatrick came over and created turn after, turnover after turnover week after week, and they almost made the playoffs. They were in the running straight to the end, and a large portion of that was because of Minka Fitzpatrick playmaking. Minka Fitzpatrick was also a first team all pro so I'm not the only one that realizes that. As far as some cornerbacks that they really missed the boat on I think Marshawn Lattimore took that next step last year and it doesn't reflect in his rating. He's only an 86. He didn't make the top 10 list either uh, but he was taking on uh, for a good portion of the year taking on teams number one receivers and doing a pretty darn good job of it especially when Drew Brees was out I mean he was one of the main reasons that they were still winning games was because he was doing such a good job on number one receivers uh coming in uh throughout the four game stretch the defense is the reason why that why the saints kept going and won every game drew Brees was injured in uh correct me if i'm wrong i think they won every game but either way he's a guy that i think could easily be in the top 10 uh marcus peters is also a guy multiple pro bowls and he was also a first team all pro selection last year he's a scorer you know what i mean whenever you have cornerbacks that are scoring touchdowns i'm pretty score, sure he scored two three touchdowns last year at the end of the day marcus peters is only 27 Seven years old and he has seven defensive touchdowns in his career uh which like i said i mean the guy is an absolute playmaker three-time pro bowl two-time first team all pro and a and two-time second team all pro so that means he's got four all pro honors in his young career in, in a career of a guy who's only 27 years old so i'm gonna end the vid there if there's any names that you guys agree with or you think that we're missing or underrated yourself let me know in the comment section Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.